Today, I'd like to do a deep dive on how web servers, frameworks, or web frameworks serve static files. Things like how does Node and Bun and Nginx and, and your own rolled out Go server actually serve static files. It's a very mundane, simple uh, thing we never talk about. We take it for granted, it works, we never think about it. But how is it actually working under the hood? When we understand that, you can make decisions to, to, to question things that we take for granted. And as a result, maybe you can even optimize that even further. Yes, even that process that we think is simple can be further optimized. Yeah. So let's, let's zoom in. Let's go into the depth of this and learn how static files are run. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, to give you the kind of, uh, like the expectation of what we're going to discuss here, I'm going to discuss the low level concept of TCP connection. That is the receive buffer, the send buffer. These are kernel data structures that is saved on the connection property for that file descriptor. And I'm going to also discuss how a read happening from disk. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the file system cache and also how the data is written back to the client, the data being the static file. How we read it, how do you manipulate it, and how we write it back. Let's jump into it. All right. I love to use a Canva. I just learned of this feature called whiteboard. So I'm going to be using it. I apologize. I know it's a white background. I know some people, you know, does not like that. They prefer darker. But what we're interested in here is serving static files. In the overview, we have a backend here, right? We have a client. So I'll draw a laptop. And the static file that we'll be serving is actually located locally in, for simplicity, in the backend storage disk, right? For simplicity, I'm just going to use that, right? And we're going to go ahead and make a request on a short purple. I'll be sending an HTTP request, right? And I'm going to get back a response. So this is get slash. Let's say I'm retrieving the index.html. This is the very first page usually that we get back, right? Index.html page. And of course, since this is HTTP, we're going to get a bunch of headers too, right? Headers plus the body will have the content of the index.html, right? That's what's happening here. So the header is like content length, you know, a transfer encoding, no. The encoding, like is it compressed or not, things like that, right? So all the content. And so this is the overview. But what really, really happen, what really happens is first we're going to establish a TCP connection. I'm assuming here we're using either HTTP 1, 1 or HTTP 2, right? And we're going to establish a TCP connection, an actual connection, right? And that connection is established using TCP, uh, send, SNAC, SNAC, right? Optionally, and I'm, gonna, don't, I'm not going to mention it here, but optionally we can also establish a TLS connection, which will make our communication encrypted, right? But maybe I'll cover that later is now we're going to send that request inside this TCP connection. And the reason I'm saying that is because when I establish a TCP connection, we kind of do something on the back end here. We do something. The kernel piece right, uh, is the one, I'm going to make it in green so we know that it's all related. The kernel piece will create a connection for us, dedicated for that client right so assuming we go into port 80 here we're gonna get two receive uh two queues let me remove that so i can explain this all right so now we have the receive queue and the send queue receive queue is when I, when the client send you the request is technically there is nothing called a request when it comes to TCP. It doesn't know what a request is. It doesn't know what a response is. To TCP, is just a bunch of stream of packets going one way or going the other way. 
that's all so if you look underneath that request will be broken into a bunch of uh, packets you know? and each the group of these packets will represent that request these will end up in the receive queue right? so let's say uh, I have three of those guys right they end up here so now it's interesting because where is my backend coming to the equation because this as far as we know this is actually the kernel so let's actually uh, make this a little bit more uh, better this will be the kernel the OS and this will be the backend process that is running that's the user's process we call it user process because the, the user actually to differentiate it from the kernel but technically this is your node application this is your you know a go right it etc when we send a request there is part of the node.js or the button or the go or the c program that constantly asking the kernel hey is there anything for me now this communication between the kernel and um, excuse me I don't know blue right this communication between the kernel and the user space this is usually called a syscall you're making a syscall system call to the kernel to get something because that's the kernel memory that's the user space memory so there is a process that says hey read go and read or receive right so that's we actually go go and call receive rcv and this will bring that data all of the way here so that purple thing will end up in memory that's a copy that operation is actually this blue line is a physical memory copy because that is different than this we will copy the memory from this receive buffer all the way there but what is this this is just bunch of bytes if we're using unencrypted http then it's ready to be consumed almost not 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 quite so that request will have the http headers if it's a get request usually it doesn't have a body so and we'll take it as it is we we'll start the the process will stop processing it so now that we know that we passed the request we understand the request now that's when that only then after the copying after the processing after understanding what the headers are after building that request object because that request object for no it doesn't exist before that node actually builds out this object you know for you based on the data it read from the kernel and then it builds out this object and then it says all right on request it will fire off that function and that will basically get you the nice event that says oh someone just made a request and you're gonna start parsing and you have a code that says all right go let's read uh, from disk essentially that file that we request and then send it back so let's go through that part now let's go let's actually draw it here because it's you now kind of technically the kernel does the reading right now things get interesting to issue a read uh, from disk most of this operation is blocking reading from disk is until io u rank is fully implemented everywhere it's mostly a blocking operation so when you read that process that reads is just boom cannot do anything else it's a synchronous operation it's not quite but when you send that request you're blocked whoever sent that request is blocked so now we might say node is actually asynchronous or saying what are you talking about but it's the read is actually blocking so if i'm reading from disk i will ask the kernel hey read from this desk what the kernel will actually go ahead and put your process asleep and then we'll issue the read operation right to disk complete the read God uh, gets the data from the disk we're gonna put it in the file system cache 
and then the kernel will copy it or the user process will get a copy of it the file in the user space memory right but it is going through the file system let's just do this as a file system this is the fs why because every we we only deal with desk directly through we only do deal through with the desk through the file system so there's like a bunch of files and these files have metadata and and last updated and last all this stuff is has to be maintained by the kernel so if you're reading it has to go through the kernel it has to go through the file system right so we're putting it here and then we're copying it right here you know i know my drawing sucks but uh, sorry <laughs> but again it's you're gonna get the point so that eventually that's copying the beauty of this is if you issue a read and we happen to have the blocks because when you read something you don't really say like, read index to html you actually say read this file i want to read from this position to this position and the file system converts all that into a bunch of file system blocks that means hey read lbs 72 and lbs 73 something like that and it will be sent to the uh, uh, desk controller here because that's actually the desk controller so whether this is like the desk right so this could be like nvme right sata whatever that stuff right but it's actually talking to another mini driver here which is in also in the kernel and that kernel that that process talks to the not process that talks to the actual desk drive controller in the ssd right and there's also a tiny cache here as well so there's cache everywhere so there's a cache here there is another cache in the file system and there is of course your process having that index.html you guys you gotta remember what are we gonna do here right so let's keep that so now that index.html that lump of text the, the bytes are in my process memory i copied it so how many copies are here we moved this here yeah that's usually done through something called the dma which is the direct memory access so so the, the cpu is involved in the tiny stuff you know things like uh, i know keyboard if you hit a keyboard that that will issue an interrupt and the 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 data will be copied to the cpu register and from the cpu register will copy to the memory it's just right through the uh, the memory controller and the cpu so there is like always the cpu is involved but here if they're like we're copying large data like like files usually the 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 dma will take care of it and and directly the controller will just flood data directly to the memory this is a complex process because if there's like a bus involved here the cpu will hijack the bus sometimes but it's a complex operation but and essentially what we need to do is we need to understand that we're copying something to the kernel and then from the kernel we're copying again to the to the process memory so there's two copies essentially right and we have to have this in the file system because future processes like here might be another process asking for the same file we don't really need to go to this if you're writing to the same file we're gonna write first to the file system cache and then flush it you know periodically to the to the system so that's that's basically how it works i'm gonna keep this page i'm gonna create a brand new page of this now 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 what are we gonna do hussein we read the file there is a kind of actual what you actually did is not read file you might say i never read a file i just said send file or whatever you, you did use the express js and says but here's something send it here's a index.html just send it i don't care how you do it but to send it you need to read it that does, doesn't make sense right the file don't fly directly to the network right so it has to be read to disk which we did yeah so let's let's keep this as well this lump here all right so we have the what was this thing again? that was the request the purple thing is a request this blue thing is the index to the email now the process well of course if you're using javascript this is way more complicated because there is <laughs> oh god because your process actually interpreted code in this case right 
So there is another piece of memory that converts JavaScript to actual byte code that will get executed by the machine code that's that will have that instruction but i'm skipping all of that you know? and for 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 optimization we also get that which is we do just in time compile it and produce compiled code that is runnable in the heap right because you see this is if this is node or go there is a text area in the process Right? that has the code and it's read only nobody can touch it but if you have a new jet code that will that cannot go in the same text right because that has node code itself but your code which is javascript will have will go somewhere else it will go into the heap of that process because you know the process can has the stack the heap and 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 the text eventually plus other stuff like static files and the static uh, variables but now what are we gonna do we're gonna send back what are we gonna do now we're sending the file or writing the content well to write the file well you cannot just write the file directly to the to the socket of the user right we need to write the headers first to need to write the headers you need to have at least per simple headers like content length content type what is this thing you have no idea what's this. What is this lump that I just read? Well, you can say, oh, that's an HTML because the stat the extension told me it's an HTML. Uh, it's kind of not always a good idea because you might have, I don't know, someone might name it HTML, but it could be something else. I don't know, like an executable. Who knows? Right. So that's when either you as a developer say content type index html you actually specifically say it which is faster right because you if you don't then then the process has to guess what it is and either it will use this extension which i don't know if that's always the case or not or it's gonna even worse actually sniff the content to determine what it is and all of these simple things you're gonna understand because you have no idea what this black box is doing right it's doing all this all sorts of crap and you have no idea i was like what is it doing you don't have we don't have answers without looking at the source code right and so that's the content so you have to write headers first so i'm gonna do the response in orange right so the orange is the response and we're gonna do first i'm gonna write the headers when you write the headers those write operations is done i didn't mention that but writing and reading from sockets which is like this connection which is this buffer uh, these buffers essentially is asynchronous that means it's non-blocking you can write it and move on do your own thing right it's just how the kernel solved it because it's actually you're not doing much right it's just literally it's a copy of memory so now we're copying things again we're adding the header and then we need to copy that thing into the process memory right so that blue thing that lump need to go into the send queue right so we're writing so we wrote the headers like us and then we write the content itself and this could this could be a single packet this can be 10 packets right because we don't know we just write try 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 and then this the, the kernel's job to segment these segments right into the into packets right this big blob into packets now you might say i was like if i write this why doesn't actually use this cache thing to copy it that's a good question i don't know i don't think there is a way to add. there might be a way right to actually say hey i don't want i don't i didn't have i didn't need to have this crap in my process why did you copy it all the way in my memory right i didn't need to at least in this case i didn't need to Right? sometimes you do need to copy in the process sometimes you don't so there is like there's a method but i don't know much about it to be honest called send file literally it's a system call that's called send file that will literally you give it two file descriptors it will send it from this file descriptor which is to, to by the way to open a file 
you have to have a file descriptor and everything in linux is a file right uh, a file is a file directory is a file a socket is a file a connection is a file and a socket is different than a connection uh, a socket is the listening thing and you can have many connections to the same socket right because like like you have one server but 100 connections from different clients right all of these are files so you, there is a, something called send file that does that but i'm not going to discuss it here and so that that kind of optimize things like just, just go and take it there immediately but how does that work if you're going to add headers you can add your own things so it's gonna it's not as simple as we might think it so we can we have to do some things write the headers and then we could have done that we could have written the headers and say okay so so don't read the file at all just uh, write the headers i know the length let's assume i know all this stuff information i read the metadata you write the disk you write the headers but then you say okay send file so this uses this system special system call that will read the file descriptor immediately the content and if it's in cache bonus points boom directly to the send queue the send queue by the way is where the socket connection lives that before it leaves to the NIC which is the network interface card, which then leads to the, to the client. Eh? So that's what's happening here. But we had to read it here in this case. That's what almost most of the stuff does. We read it to the, to in the memory. And then I want to talk more about this, but I'm afraid I'll forget. When else do we going to read it? Compression. If we support compression like gzip which http most of the except encoding headers supports it like if, if you support it then the send file won't work right because you had to read it here in memory so that you can produce a new copy that is can you change the color of this thing i suppose not huh oh sorry i'll just color over it this yellow thing is the compressed one because now you're compressing it. So this is the compressed version. So to compress, you need CPU. You need, you need the thing in memory and you need to execute code that knows compression and that's all CPU, right? Because like, oh, read this Huffman thing and just read this and do the tree and then produce a brand new. So you need more memory first for compression. And then you're gonna shove that into the send queue so that's how you do it with compression right so let's do this i'm gonna keep this can i duplicate yeah perfect right so that's the with compression that's with compression that's without compression so send write content no compress we have this memory in the user space for the request we have this and we have this and then we have compressed and you want to make it even more complex encrypt tls which is almost always enabled right in, in the web to, today if you want to encrypt it after compression you have to do another copy to actually encrypt it right so this send file which we by the way called zero copy because literally there is no copying you're not copying to user space you immediately <laughs> sending it to the socket it's very rare that you can actually pull it off right there is i might say there is actually a send file ssl right kernel method that actually you send your key to the kernel and says all right uh, i want you to read but encrypt on the way encrypt it on the way here in your kernel space and send it i don't know who, which kernels which version supports it. i don't know any of that but yeah if you do that then you got this information now let's go back all the way to this puppy right now we did all of that i think we didn't leave anything out so now we're gonna send the response how do we send the response it's basically these packets right these packets will end up uh all of them if we support encryption they will be encrypted as well but they will so this is the response now we're sending the response back to the client it could be one packet it could be uh, 300 packets right? uh, depends on how large your stuff is and the client will receive that and then 
assemble all these packets in its own receive queue because there is also in the client kernel there will be another receive queue and there will be another send queue so in this case you're going to get it in your receive queue as a client so that's the front end and the, and then you're going to read and read and read and read like like what we did here we're going to read which is all asynchronously thank god right all these operations are asynchronous uh so something called the epoll if you ever use that pull and select this area right. is there anything in this socket that i can read and it will it will say all right or there yes there is something so you go ahead and you read because if you read if you attempt to read from the connection or from the socket uh, that is from the cpq and it's empty you're going to be blocked so i have to mention that right but if so, so what you do is you do an e poll it says all right is any of these file descriptors like say you have multiple connections is any of these guys uh, ready ready that means they have content so the kernel will uh will essentially tell you well uh no actually we don't have that so try again so this is actually very chatty today is there anything 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 oh yes so io ring is basically the holy grail that solves all of this right I might make another video for that. I owe you ring. That's what you say. Uh, that's how you say it. You send a request to the to the ring, and there's like a shared memory between the user space and kernel space. And they can write and read simultaneously from it. Right? Of course, there's like of course protection against mutexes and stuff like that. But yeah, that's how it works. It only took me I don't know how long <laughs> to explain all of that. Right? I know people complain, ah, this could have been done in three minutes and you talk like 30 minutes. I know, I'm sorry, I'm slow, right? Uh, I don't know what to do. I, I like to go through details, right? And uh, yeah, I enjoy this stuff. Uh, I hope you, uh, I hope you did. Uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye. And yeah, uh, got a plug, right? You like this stuff? You love what you see here in this channel? Go to this site back of the win right? i made like another domain this relates to my udemy course uh, back in engineering fundamentals of back in engineering i explain this stuff and more and more and more so if you like this stuff hit there and enjoy the course see you in the next one goodbye